afternoon. My name is Alina Shavtsova. I'm an immigration attorney from Brooklyn, New York. In today's video, I'm going to tell you about the new citizenship test. The new citizenship test that um, was published today, Friday the 13th, 2020. We're going to go over as to what changed uh, when the test is going, this new test is going to uh, be required for which applications. And um, of course, we're going to talk about the substance of the new test as well. So please, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, uh, subscribe, hit that notification button. I am providing updates regarding various changes in immigration law frequently to my subscribers. And I hope you will find my channel useful. So now let's uh, focus on that new citizenship test. Well, first of all, you may be aware that in order to become a citizen in the United States, it's not enough for a person just to become first a permanent resident and um, reside in the United States. You have to demonstrate basic knowledge of English language and uh, knowledge of civics, history, of the United States and the way the United States society, government are operating. And this is precisely the area um, that is going to be changed soon. This area of knowledge, area of uh, history and society of the United States, um, where we're seeing the change. The good news is that the English portion of the test is not uh, changing yet, even though the Trump administration promised to make it a little bit more difficult, uh, from what I understand, but that portion has not been changed. Okay, that portion of the test. So civics. Um, first of all, you need to know that uh, for applications that are going to be filed on December 1st, 2020 and after, this new set of rules is going to be applied. So for those applications and applicants who are going to file the applications on December 1st, 2020 and onward, whenever you're going to have an interview now to pass the civics test, you will have to correctly answer 12 out of 20 questions. To compare, right now a person has to correctly answer 6 out of 10 questions. So the number of the questions is going to be doubled and um, the percentage of the right questions that you have to answer is still the same, but the number of the questions is going to be doubled. So it's going to be uh, 12 out of uh, 20. And if, let's say, during this test, uh, you answer every 12, first 12 questions correctly, the office still has to ask you all 20 questions. It's very important. So every applicant, regardless of their answers, are going to be asked 20 questions and must provide correct, at least 12 correct answers. So double the amount of questions is going to be doubled. Okay. Now, um, the questions themselves. I, should, I reviewed the questions. Uh, now there are 128 questions that are published um, practice questions for the exam. And uh, in my review, in my conclusion, uh, these are the most important new areas that were added to the tested uh, knowledge, to the, to the areas that will be tested. Well, the first uh, group of questions is focusing on the reasons as to why the United States entered various wars in the 20th century, including the Cold War. Then there is a, a question about uh, United States innovations and a group of questions regarding symbols and holidays. Also, there were some new questions regarding some important for the United States history persons. Okay. Nothing really, nothing really difficult. I'm sure each and every one of you who is preparing for the exam will be able to cope with those questions. But let, let me give you some examples of the new 
of the new questions. For example, um, during the Cold War, what was one main concern of the United States? And suggested answers are communism, nuclear war. Then there is a question, who was the United States main rival during the Cold War? And um, suggested answers are Soviet Union, USSR, and Russia. Well, of course, uh, in my understanding, Russia is not the same as Soviet Union because Soviet Union consisted of uh, 15 republics, right? But these are the suggested answers that if you uh, provide the answer Russia, it will count as um, as correct answer for the United States citizenship exam. Then we have uh, these questions. Why did the United States enter the Korean War? To stop the spread of communism is the answer. Why did the United States enter the Vietnam War? To stop the spread of communism. Um, why did the United States enter the Persian Gulf War? To force the Iraqi military from Kuwait. So these are the new questions. Uh, one of the questions that I found interesting was the question number 118. Name one example of an American innovation. And suggested answers are light bulb, uh, cars, skyscrapers, airplane, assembly line, landing on the moon, integrated circuit. Um, then there are questions about symbols and holidays. For example, uh, where is the Statue of Liberty? What is the capital of the United States? Why does the flag have 50 stars? Why does the flag have 13 stripes? Um, I believe some of those were um, a part of the current test as well, some of those questions. And um, that's basically, those, those are the basic questions that you expect to provide answers to during the United States. Uh, one of the questions, of course, the new questions during the United States neutralization exam. Now, one important thing that you need to be aware of is this. If you are 65 and above, uh, you don't have to study all of these 128 questions. If you can demonstrate that you resided in the United States for 20 years as a permanent resident, uh, you will need to study only 20 questions and um, you'll be tested, um, you'll be asked 10 questions and need to provide answers to six of those questions correctly, if I'm not mistaken, okay? So you don't have to study all of those questions, but I have to tell you that if you, if you have resided in the United States for three or five years, the usual amount of years necessary for somebody to file for naturalization, you should have no problem, no problem answering questions about um, holidays and symbols. This is the information that uh, we probably all know just from general sources. But of course, certain questions, certain answers to questions, uh, people with a foreign background will probably want to review um, using this preparation materials that USCIS uh, has published on their website, and I'm going to publish a link to those materials. You don't have to pay money to anyone for that. You can easily download them uh, from the government website. They're free. So these are the changes that are coming up. And of course, the, I find that the main change will be in the number of questions. Okay, The questions themselves, they're changing, but nothing super difficult. You can memorize those answers and questions, but of course you have to be able to give the correct answers during your interview. So if you find this video helpful, please like and share and uh, subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you soon.